Sometimes it just feels like meh. How difficult would this be if it was less annoying? How much of it is me sucking and how much of it is them being actual challenging or annoying? If anything, let more of the timers be in the control of the player. Because I just don't like the desync. <laughs> Time! It hurts me! Me just screaming at a clock. Yeah, because all I need to do is hit, uh, three... Uh, three average viewers on this here Twitch, and I'll be able to actually, uh, uh, put in, I guess, uh, a thingamajig for an emote. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Alright, don't know where the other boxes are, and I honestly don't care. Actually, I think I know where they are. But yeah, I've been getting better and better, uh, like, average viewer counts here on Twitch. Whoa, that was close. Kind of like I'm getting better at the timing on these dudes. Losing less and less of my lives to the stupid evilness. The stupid evilness. The next grand villain. Now that I know I don't have to bounce on them, that makes that part easier. Get out of here. A lot of this is learning, memorization, and patterns and stuff. It's just the patterns hurt my head. Alright, we're gonna let it do it up. Why, do your, why is your voice kind of electronic when only your gloves are robotic? Don't do that to me. Oh, yes, you say you look very great, sir. Ah, oh, they took away the health. Now for the abysmal monster. I'm not gonna make it. Damn it. The timing on that, it, it doesn't need the shooty shoots. It doesn't need the shooty of electricity. It just has it to be annoying. In my personal opinion. It's like, it's a three stage thing that you have to open the door. It's just like one of those things doesn't need to be here. One of these things just doesn't belong here. It's you, Billy Bones. And you, Slimo. Go back to becoming Ecto Cooler. Like, this door doesn't need to be here, Miles. Man. There we finally freaking go. Please. Fuck. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Let's make the final part annoying. After an annoying part. Genius! Next, let's dock our employees' pay. Yeah, that's a little harsh, but still, let's get. I'm just feeling the spite of the developer coming through. The pain and the misery. Especially considering. If you uh, land on a already ticking time bomb TNT, they don't bounce, which is weird. And plus the perspective! Perspective, man. Ah! One, two, 
go not totally like honestly the only things that really drove me insane were the bridges and they still had an ounce of fun in them the only part that was really aggravating was the first level i played which was the slippery slope steps things which felt on which just felt like it was unnecessary cruel in the beginning and then kind of easy near the end only hard at the end because you lacked the lives that the beginning of the level took from you. Just a little bit like, eh, could be tighter here or there. So it's, and it's hard to tell with this. Is it hard because... Um... I don't think that's a hidden gem. Because I don't think I have the gym for that. So I guess... I guess that's the... Oh, come back to this level when you have the stiddly stuff. In fact... What even was that achievement for? Uh, notifications, I guess. A hidden gem. What does that achievement mean? Discover a gym path after earning a color gym. I did not earn anything. Okay, that was weird. Okay. And I didn't want to jump onto the sinking platform because it didn't look like it was there. <laughs> Dr. Neocortex. Children energy bolts. Alright, didn't finish reading that. Uh, and darn you, look at the fabric. Okay, got it. Green is bad, yellow, gold is gold. Interesting music. Damn it! He purposely missed me with those. That's annoying. I have the same logic for everything except ones that are easily, like, told apart, in my opinion. Dang it. Or maybe I'm just too good at dodging. Interesting music. Also, is it just me or does he sound like Ganon from the CDI games? Join me or you will die. Okay, you have to hit it multiple times apparently. That's a little annoying. No. <laughs> Hit boxes. Darn, you Darn your hit boxes, and the fact that you can fall off. Oh, so you're not gonna put invisible walls here where it's actually annoying, but back at the start of a level that's annoying to do, you're not gonna let me suicide to get my lives back. These developers do not know what they wanted to do with this remake. Ish. Dang it. Yeah, give me my lives back. <laughs> the way that he twisted around to follow my falling body. Okay, that made it worth it. That made it worth it. Also, you can bet your biddly butts that this game has a, uh, uh, beat... I can only bet that this game has a beat the entire game without dying thingy. Yeah, I wouldn't say that this is a quick cash grab because a lot of this is really good overall. It's just that uh, there are little problems. Just little problems that I exasperate because they stick with me so much. Overall, it's good. Damn it! Hit boxes!
and have to go through that entire thing again because they changed up the rules a little bit and made it so you actually have to hit multiple ones at him. What the? Ending fucking lag. Fuck you. Wish that you could spin just a bit faster, or that, like, the, like, command lag wasn't there. Or at least what feels like command lag. Alright. Now what's this third stage gonna be? Damn it. Running. Ronin. Wavy patterns. Damn it. And of course it's a multi-hitter. And it's staying up there is in and of itself a hitbox. That is ridiculously stupid. That is very, very stupid in design. Just no. There's no defending that at all. It makes sense in context because they're laser beams. It's supposed to be fun. And it just ruins the flow, the natural flow you get by playing this fight. At the very least, these ones kind of like mitigate how much you jump, but diddly still. Dang it! Have to have to survive the jumping part. Because these ones want you to jump. Or at least that first one. And again, uh, checkpoints would be really nice in this boss fight because, oh well, that was a fast projectile that I couldn't fucking dodge. I was moving the moments that that came on screen, I swear. That's stupid. Just certain hitboxes, man. Certain hitboxes just make me want to tear my hair out. Damn it. Wish the music could be just a little bit more upbeat. I was gonna make a full-on jump to try and hit him with the first green bolt, but then I remembered, oh yeah, that's a physical object that can hit me. Fuck off, that's so stupid. Some of these things are just too stupid, man. Some of these things. Like, oh, they can be reflected. Which means you have to get in their way. And because of the perspective, sometimes it's hard to tell when they're right next to you and therefore can be hit. Darn you, Crash Bandicoot. Just little things, little quality assurances that needed to be there for, uh, like, a seamless gameplay life. Like, it's not bad, it's just like, these are just the problems that are there. Just makes me wonder why. Why did you do this? And again, this is probably, quote-unquote, the worst, quote-unquote, trash game of the original trilogy. So, that just means that, like, it's kind of like a no-dub. The first one's not gonna be the best. The first one's gonna have problems. And a lot of people might be like, oh, if they changed, uh, things to be, like, better people might be like, err, they messed with the vision. Damn it. I do not like you sometimes. I do not like you. Crash Bandicoot. Wop. Wop. Laser beams. Fuck. Perspective. Implemented better somehow.
Because I do not have this kind of problem in most games. Bibbly Bob. Alright, no more jumping because of that! Damn it! Alright, part of the fight I've never seen before, I think. Oh yeah, the rapid fire monkey! Ah, oh, damn it. Oh, what the is ah! Perspective! Darn you, Crash Bandicoot! Darn your somewhat badly designed boss fight. When it comes. If only if, if it was just. If they fixed the perspective. Because it's hard to freaking tell. Sometimes, when you're just trying to avoid the purple ones or the blue ones, it's kind of hard to tell exactly where the green one is in relation to the overall battlefield. Not terrible, just like, please, please, if you could have fixed it just a teeny bit, it would go a long way. It's like, the way that it's designed currently has the makings of just a grand boss fight. Fuck. Well, that's annoying. Two purple ones. And I have to survive through the entire thing. Okay, good. That other green one didn't come through. At least that's there. Fuck, oh, damn it! <laughs> Again, when you're trying to get through the chaos and the rain, it's like it's hard to tell where some of the bullets are in relation to you. Especially on that next to last bullet hell stage. Well, bullet hell, quote unquote. Damn it. Like, the one thing that I hate the most is that the bullets that you accumulate are a physical entity unto themselves. And that just sucks. That just sucks a lot of the momentum out of it because that lessens the screen space you have. And that might be, like, a part of the plan. But, like, it doesn't make that much sense. Fuck off. This is annoying. He's a little annoying. Little annoying. Oh. Let's see if I can make it through without a hit on this one. Nope, because uh, I again. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna move, and then no. Pain and misery, man. Shut up. Also, I don't understand why one bullet. Uh, is enough to make him go, ah! but then you need to accumulate it more later. Like, I know boss battle mechanics, but. Motherfucker. Motherfucker! There is no leniency when it comes to the speed of some of these bullets. Or at least I didn't get hit, so I still have three hit. Well, yeah, well, two hits. Quote, note to self, stop trying to read chat during boss battles. Especially slightly annoying boss battles like this. Booyah! Two hits for the final two boss parts. Damn it again! He purposely fires that away! That part is st oh oh yeah. Okay, good. But I don't have any extra hits, so I don't know what this gonna. Oh. Why 
What? What? Are you... What? What? And no, he doesn't build up shock resistance because just that! <laughs> Because <laughs> somebody chat just said, like, oh, he builds up shock resistance. That's how he takes more shot, but no, that just disproved it. <laughs> oh. This was the first in the Insane Trilogy remaster for Crash Bandicoot. And we just uh, went through uh, Hell and High Water with that final boss fight, which is just kind of weird. And it was just hilarious. <laughs> it was just hilarious. Because <laughs> it's the timing of that. Oh no, I am not 100%ing this anytime soon. Mainly just because I want a break from this. <laughs> And, uh, it's pain. It is pain and misery, boys. Pain and misery, boys! Get it while it's hot. And, like, overall, I like the game. It's fun. It's just the parts where it feels like, we need to make it more difficult. Then tied into the fact that, apparently, the remaster doesn't do the best job of replicating the platforming from the original. What with the lack of the, uh, oh, you walked off of a ledge, you can still kind of jump leniency. And the, oh, what's that? Uh, you thought you were on that ledge? No, we rounded the ledges, so you just fall off. That's the one thing that I remember from, uh, like, a really, ch like, not even cheap. It was a free, like, game design tutorial thing. And in it, the guy was going over enemy hitboxes. And, uh, player hitboxes. And the one thing that he said was, when it comes to hitboxes, uh, the players should always be slightly smaller to give leniency, uh, and the enemies should always be bigger to give leniency. And just like, I feel like that should be applied to the platforming. <laughs> It's like, overall, it's good, it's decent, it's... But at the same time, it's the first game in a uh, trilogy. So obviously it's gonna be the less of the refined, it's not gonna be the best. And, like, that's the thing that I've ran into with so many games. Like, even my one of my favorite game series of all time, Spyro. The first Spyro game is kind of wonky in some places. To the point that it wasn't until my latest playthrough a few weeks ago that I realized that one of the things that comes with the supercharge segments is that some of the jumps can only be done after a double supercharge. I disagree with the enemy part, you should have to hit hitboxes, uh, have the hitboxes be as tight as the model as you can, so you don't take damage from misleading distances. It depends what you mean by hitbox, because there's damage boxes, like, of projectiles, which I think you might mean, and then there's hitboxes of actual, like, enemy models. And, like, yeah, the hitboxes of enemies should be as accurate as possible and, uh, but maybe slightly bigger in some places, so it's not just like, oh, you barely missed. And then there's ones like, uh, the player's mo uh, hitbox should be not as stringent, just because they're the one moving around and there's already enough things that can screw them over. But, overall, coming back to this, is like, I like this game. It's fine, and like, again... It's the first part of a trilogy. So, it's gonna be the first step that the developers really took. And again, Spyro. I really, really like Spyro, but the first Spyro game is wonky in some places. The supercharge is that they don't explain everything. And then there's Uncharted 1, which I kinda don't like in some places. It's fine, it's decent, and it's a fun time if you don't take it seriously. But 
the bad parts are really bad with the insta-deaths and just the fact that Sully is useless. And then Ratchet and Clank. I do not like Ratchet and Clank that much, mainly because, well, the first game. I haven't tried any of the other games yet, so I don't know. The main reason why I dislike Ratchet and Clank 1 so much is primarily because it is one of those guy dang it new blind syndrome games where it's just like, oh, you don't know which items are the best to get, so you're going to waste your money. And this game already, like, takes your bolts and wastes them on useless things and plot relevancy. And then there's going to be a somewhat late game health upgrade and a double health upgrade. And then there's going to be this weird thing where ammo doesn't always appear on the final boss. Which leads to your death because the final boss is a bullet sponge. Not to mention that the story is kind of stupid in Ratchet and Clank 1. And they kind of borked Ratchet's character. And you nobody can say that me criticizing Ratchet's character in the first game is wrong when they change Ratchet's character later in the series and in the remake. Nobody can call me out on my hatred of Ratchet's character in the first game. I am vindicated by the developers themselves. Granted, some people might say, like, oh, character development. And I'm just like, no, it was a bad character to begin with. The development is that they retconned him. <laughs> it's mainly because of the way he acts in the game, where, like, Oh, what's that? Planetary genocide? Who cares about that? This one guy betrayed me, so I'm gonna go hunt him down more important than anything and constantly mock the best character in the game just because he made one little mistake that's caused not mainly from plot need. It's weird. It is weird. And this is a long credit sequence. It, it, it has the good music, so I don't mind that much. Like, again, honestly, this just makes me excited to play the other ones because they would be more refined. Well, with the exception of the, uh, because I heard that the way that they remade the platforming in the remakes makes some of the jumps in um, Crash 3 literally impossible. So I have heard. That's gonna suck. Yeah. Overall, decent game. The first, and this is one third of the overall game. So just going like, ah, the design, like the somewhat clunky designs of a first game in a trilogy combined with the weirdness of a remake that don't really mesh too well. And I can still derive fun from this, but it really could have used, uh, like, just removing the life system. Like, honestly, the life system has no point in this game. Because in the original, in the original Crash game, if I remember correctly, you can only save after you beat a boss. Like, after you beat Papu Papu, after you beat the, uh, weird jumping kangaroo dude. So if you died, and you lost all your lives, you'd be sent all the way back. All the way back. Look at all these time trials that suck. Go away. No one loves you. What is it, the VVQAs? I don't get it. And you can see a bunch of names. It's like, are these, like, developer names? Like, oh, you know, here's the developer's best times. Like, honestly, I could see that. Here's the developer's best times. On these levels, get the gold by beating these times. No bandicoots were harmed during the creation of this game. Well, when I get up my hands on them, that's gonna change.
That art looked a little weird, if you ask me. Oh yeah, and we need to save so we can say like, yeah, we beat the we beat this one. We didn't complete it because I don't want to right now. And honestly, I really don't care for some of the stuff in this. It's like, oh, beat a level without dying to get all the deedly doos. Kinda don't care about that. It's like, this is one of those games where it's like, do I really want to play through it again, only 100%ing it? I prefer games that have like a decent completion curve. Well, now the question is, what should I do now? Because, like, I still have uh, time in my docket for this, and it's just like, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Well, I guess I'll give the, since I've been recording, I'll give the uh, outro to the, I'll give an outro to the YouTube viewers. Well, thank you very much for watching, everybody. This has been... Crash Bandicoot, the first of the Insane Trilogy, and I will see you dudes next time. Gotta fly!